check our comfort level. Um, do you mind the lighting that it is now? No, that's fine. Do you, okay, so this no, is good? Yes, no. No, I yes, it's okay. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, okay. I don't know how to answer that yeah. question. Do you mind? Yes. 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 Um, it does not, there's, there's stuff that is going to be on the presentation, but this isn't really the front, and I will walk around and do different things. I vote that Marty is on the lights team. Yeah. So whenever you need the light switch, he's just... He's going to be the boss. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Oh, he's um, okay, so... so I would be more visible uh -huh. in this. Thank you on a Saturday. Uh -huh. um, to uh, coming in and doing stuff. I was just talking to Abby and Abby just presented in the last in the last uh, session. It's nice to have interaction. It's nice to have uh, you know feeling like you're not up here presenting and everybody's like, oh, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> you know. um, so I really appreciate um, your enthusiasm. All right. Woo! Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Insert exclamation here. Okay. Um, yes, I'm excited because I and actually I feel I wanted to present this because I actually think that this is really important and I think that this is applicable to all areas and all grade levels. And um, when I started learning more about you know who I am as a questioner and who I am as a as an educator, and the more I saw. Oh wait, I'm not like I ask questions a lot. I do that. And what are you doing? Why are you doing that? Why do you think you are doing that? Yeah. Um, those are all things that happen a lot as a parent and as an educator. And um, when I started to to delve a little deeper in what does that mean, I thought, wow, this is really changing the way my perspective on this. So I hope that there's going to be some um, learning that you have already about this, or some. Um, some background that you have on questioning, that you've done PD, because we're all educators. Um, but then maybe that this might either remind you of something that you that you forgot, like, oh yeah, that would be good, better practice or good practice for us. Or if this is something that's new, you're like, oh, I really enjoy doing this. And, um, and I always like to couch any kind of new learning in something applicable, like something you can take away and do right away. And so that's why I couched questioning, which I feel really passionate about, into a read aloud because those are fun and they can be done from anybody. So thank you for that. Um, I also wanted to let you know we are live streaming or recording our, our session for our friends in China. Hi China, we all. So just just so you know that that's that that's happening. So Marty means I have to be here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying it. I'm just. Thinking maybe you know, just FYI was a good one. Um, and like I said, this is supposed to be enthusiastic. So if there's questions or comments or or things that you want to know more of, let me know. I'm I'm very happy to share. Um, if this turns into something like I would really like some coaching on this, I'm your girl because like, this is it has some really great stuff. So on your desk, um, it's lots of papers. So don't don't be mad. Um, but take a minute and take some white paper and write down what are some questions you typically ask in your classroom. What are some things that you would that you commonly say? And you don't have to share these questions with with anybody. This is just for your own benefit. Just take a minute.
write your questions in any language, that's okay. Are we writing Spanish or Chinese? Welsh. Welsh. Just finish up your last one. It's okay if you haven't written all of your ideas down. That's all right. Um, fold your paper in half. Okay. And you're going to pass it. No, I'm just kidding. You're oh, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you're not passing it. <laughs> um, go ahead and just put that at the top of your table for right now. And, and remember where it is, and you'll come back to it later. So you can put your name on it if you like, but it's good. Just take those ideas, put them on your paper, and we will, we will review. All right, so let me talk to you a little bit about why we do um, clickers. Why do we have clickers that work? <laughs> Hold on, here we go. Uh, down. Down. Okay. Down. Down. There you go. The other direction. Okay, so read aloud. So <coughs> academically, why do we have read alouds? Um, it helps demonstrate proficient reading. Um, it helps at, uh, give access to texts that are beyond the kids' abilities. Uh, this is also exposes children to a variety of genres. Um, the teacher reads while students listen and discuss through Accountable Talk. Um, I'm gonna reference Accountable Talk and I have some materials in the, uh, the team drive about Accountable Talk, so I'm not gonna talk about it a lot, but just so you know that that's also available. But more importantly, like why, the, so that's the academic reasons, but why do we want to do this also? Like how do we develop our kids as readers and as learners and as people? Because Read Aloud should have engaged readers in an emotional way. It should also help them intellectually. It should engage them authentically. You know, Read Alouds used well um, also help them ponder and linger and reflect on not just the book itself, but on life, on how does, you know, what are some big ideas or big thinking that people have about different ideas. And then it also inspires them to want to read better. And it also inspires them to have powerful ways of their own to access text and to have discussions about it. So how do we get our kids to, to get there is not an easy task. That's why what we do is we use um, read alouds to elicit some of that discussion. So we're kind of having the think alouds for the kids and giving them the opportunity to think about it, talk about it, um, and, and delve more into what does that really mean. Uh, Ginny Lockwood has done a lot of work with um, interactive read alouds. She works in New York. Um, she does amazing things. I've seen her present um, several times. And um, one of the things that she said that just really hit me was, um, when reading when engaging and successful calls us to action, emotional, intellectual, and often social action, reading when engaging and successful can and should change one's view of the world and how to live in more aware and self-involved ways. So this, I think, I think, talks to us as who we are at SSIS. I think we are often um, invoked by, you know, um, sustainable thinking or some um, being well-rounded and, and talking about our kids holistically and how do we set them into the world and being uh, not just academically you know, strong students but also uh, emotionally strong and also um, aware of other people and what they what they bring to the table and one of the areas that Ginny had brought to our to my attention um, was for a better world reading and writing for social action and in this work they, they talk about how do you um, look at reading through a critical lens. So we could talk about like the critical lens of groups, of the dynamics of groups, uh, power, who has power, who doesn't. Um, what are some different perspectives that, that reading can bring? Um, violence and peace, and how does that affect social norms, and how does that affect literacy, and how does that affect what people read and write? So this, these are actually really interesting and, and I would love to do more work with people about this in more depth. This is actually really, I think, um, speaks again to who we are. Um, and I thought that this would be a nice lens that we are looking at some reading today. Um, and when you are looking at your students, 
when you're looking at read alouds in the future, like think about what are some of those lenses that these writings or these books are um, bring to the table. And then through these questioning, you'll have like some of those deeper thinking kind of rise to the surface. So today I'm gonna read to you a book called The Living Morning. Um, it's one of my favorite books um, by Angela Johnson. And uh, I read this book to adults all, often. I read this to parents, I read this to teachers, I've read this to students. This is technically a level I uh, level book, which is about second grade level. Um, but you're gonna see that this, even though this book is not necessarily a reading challenge, but the conversations that we're gonna have and the kinds of questions I'm gonna ask is gonna show you how deep the story can actually go. All right, you ready for it? All right. So because the pictures are kind of small, well, it's actually smaller because I could show you the pictures, but I also have them on here, so I'll read to you alongside once you do see the pictures. The leaving happened on a soupy, misty morning, when you could hear the street sweeper outside. Shh. Sorry. Longer, longer, one. There we go. We pressed our faces against the hall window and left cold lips on the pane. It was a leaving morning. Boxes of clothes, toys, dishes, and pictures of us everywhere. Angela Johnson, the author of the story, she calls it the leaving morning. What do you think she means by that? I want you to think for a minute and then turn and talk to a partner. What do you think Angela Johnson calls this the leaving morning. What does she mean by that?
are so many things that are left in this image, you know, the bear and the pictures and all that, tells me that it's not everyone's thing. And, and it's what, who, who's thing? Let's find out. The leaving had been long because we'd packed days before and said goodbye to everyone. Our friends, the grocer, everybody in our building. Who do you think is telling the story? Who's the narrator? Think for a minute. Whose perspective? Somebody say bye to cousins. Why would that take all day long? Just go ahead and shout out why. So many. Wow. So many of them? What they're else? Moving far, they're moving far away, perhaps, huh? It's moving far away. What else? Maybe the use of cousins isn't necessarily biological, biological cousins. It could be like community. So it's a larger group than. So maybe this is a hard hard time yeah, all day long to just symbolize that it's it's this is a difficult uh, goodbye. Mm -hmm. Family and community wanted to get together, have a celebration, I guess, mm -hmm. of being together. So that, that took all day. <laughs> Any other thoughts?
We woke up early and had hot cocoa from the deli across the street. I made more lips on the window, on the deli window, and watched for the movers on the leaving morning. I want to show you something that, that Angela did that was really interesting and pretty sophisticated at this level, is she had a flashback, right? So it's the leaving morning in the beginning of the story, when they have their lips on the pane, and then the, the saying goodbye was actually all a flashback, and now we're back here in the present. So even for this level, there's some sophistication in, in the storytelling. We sat on the steps and watched the movers. They had, they had blue moving clothes on and made bumping noises on the stairs. There were lots of, sorry, lots of whistles and, hey, watch out kids. Got me a moving hat and a kiss on the head from Miss Maddie upstairs. I'm on the leaving morning, she told me to watch myself in the new place when I cross the street and think of her. Think for a second. Why would Miss Maddie feel the need to warn about crossing the street? Warned about cross the street besides moving a bush bin, which actually, when I was a student, kids, they're like, they must have moved here. <laughs> so, anyway, talk to a partner. because Miss Maddie is probably very emotional about moving and look both ways is kind of an innocuous way to say that she cares about the child. So rather than becoming very emotional about it, she's like, hey, look both ways. <laughs> <laughs> what does an innocuous mean, Jason? That's like a season. <laughs> I actually don't know. Like, it's, it's not offensive in any way. It's like oh, okay. not causing, like, it tells us something that uh, you would do probably on a daily basis. So uh, in a way, she's saying, think of me when you cross the street. So she's not forgetting where they came from and who these people were. So every time there's a street crossing, oh, I remember Miss Maddie. She's always saying, okay. don't give her a number. <laughs> <laughs> Any other ideas? Before you do. All right, let's find out. We have other conspiracy theories, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll talk about that after. Okay. <laughs> That'll be our next piece. <laughs> Alright, so let's find out. So I sat between my mama and daddy, holding their hands. My daddy said in a little while we'd be someplace we'd love. So I left lips on the front pane, the front window of our apartment and said goodbye to our old place on the leaving morning. Yeah. Oh, I, think so. I love that answer. Anyway, yeah. 
Yes. I get that every time. So my final question for us is, why the lips on the pain? Why should should they have left them there? Bacteria. Discuss with your partners. <laughs> Discuss at your table team. <laughs>
the critical lenses. What, think about and, and share with your table, what lens do you think that this story, you know, maybe my line of questioning for you guys, or maybe some of the, um, what brings, what, what seems to speak to you at, from this book, the perspective of this book. What lens do you think um, this is written by and what you, how you perceive this? Think and then you can talk out of the table. Read aloud and teach the kids 
in their own narrative, like how do you do a flashback? Let's, let's watch how Angela Johnson does it. And then you use that book several times. Onomatopoeia, you remember the shh in the beginning, right? Kind of sets you in the mood, it puts you in the time of. So even a read aloud, which maybe in middle school social studies or science or math or, or high school, like maybe that's not something you would have picked to invoke this, but you have the opportunity to, to see like, what, kinds of, what kinds of lenses can I evoke in the kids. So, uh, so one of the things that I think you probably have already learned here are the different types of questions. So let's, we're gonna analyze what I've asked you and how did I ask those questions. Because it doesn't, the book itself may not bring that out in kids. So my job as, as the educator, as the person presenting this, is to help you get there. So I ask these questions, I give you opportunities to talk, I give you opportunities to think, redesign your thinking, come back. Um, but I don't, it doesn't just happen by chance. Um, you may or may not have seen this when I learned about um, these types of questions of like, oh, what have I been doing with these like last five years um, when I first started? Um, and these three kinds of questions, focusing questions, assessing questions, and advancing questions was something that I learned during uh, when I became a math coach. And it really helped me like, refocus what I was doing. You know, we talk about Bloom's taxonomy, we talk about the levels of, of inquiry, but I would still ask these questions about the kids, you know, to the kids, and I'd get questions like, and her answers. Or, you know, they give me an answer and it seems to veer off in, in lots of different directions. And then when I learned about like what kinds of questions am I asking them, like when I'm asking questions like that are helping them focus, I'm saying, you know, so tell me what you understand about this assignment. Or tell me what you think you're supposed to be doing next. Um, was a different kinds of was a different kind of um, level of questions that helped them go, oh, yeah, 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 this is what I need to do. The assessing questions were checking their understanding. What do you know? What, did, what does this relate to? How is this connected to the work that we're doing? And then the advancing questions is um, beyond. So how does this relate to other ideas? How does this now, um, how is that connected to the idea we talked about last semester? So these are things that you're asking the kids. Now you're not saying only low level questions are here, only middle, you know, high level questions are here. You're constantly asking these questions in, in a, throughout. So in my, in the book, Here's a picture of how I, this is how I visualize it. Focusing questions, the kids are kind of everywhere. <laughs> Assessing questions, like what connections are you making, right? And then advancing, like what else does that mean, right? So this is a nice little image that I'm like, ah, yes, I can do this. This I, this I get. So one of the, the things I love, um, uh, sayings I like a lot of, uh, from Lucy is, um, I think when we teach, we need to remember that human beings want to work with the heart and soul on endeavors that matter. And this is this is my my belief. Like I want this to be purposeful for us. I want this to I want kids to gain something from this. And it's not just just the the uh, the behaviors of reading, but that this reading invokes passion and thought and and discourse and questions and pushing back. So. In our read aloud, what I've done is I've asked three different types of questions. They are related to those other types of questions. So the literal questions are generally what is holding the gist of the story. Um, I asked three literal questions. I don't know if you caught them or not. We can talk about what those are. Um, those could be considered either focusing or assessing questions. You know, do you understand what's happening in the story? Um, I generally, when I do a read aloud, I scoop the literal. I will not ask very many of those, but I will scoop it up and say, hey, look, this is what happened. When, uh, when I said, Angela Johnson did something really interesting right now, I could have asked you, did you notice what Angela Johnson did? But what I did was I just scooped that up because I, I want you to know this is what she did, and we'll explore that further. 
um, I don't need to have a big discussion about it because I my my priority right now is for you to think big big picture, right? Um, inferential questions like making sense of and thinking more about the story, especially what's not on the page, those could be considered assessing or advancing questions depending on your purpose and what the student gives you. If this is checking, do they understand what's happening, then it would be an assessing, but if it's something that is, you got it and they're, they're just pushing their thinking more, then it would be considered an advancing question. And then the unanswerable, these are the ones I, I left with. Right? It's like, there better be an answer. That's what I think uh, Abby said. She's like, there better be an answer to this. And I was like, and let's find out. <laughs> um, pondering something bigger launched by the story. So in your packets right now, I've included my lesson plan. Oh, I've included a blank lesson plan of an interactive read aloud form. So this, is, this would be something that you would look at when you're looking at a book for a potential read aloud. So I want you to have some time to look through that and you know, look on like the, the author, the purpose, the themes. Yeah, that's what you call it. That's okay. You can have both. And in this packet, you'll see also kind of the, the forms that I'm going through. So this is how I consider at this, the things I look at when I'm considering the books that I'm looking at. Where are the themes? You see the critical lens. What's my engagement? How am I going to start this? Where are my final thoughts? What do I think that I want the kids to get from it? And then on the back is where I would um, keep track of what my questions are. You couldn't see them on your book, but and I. I do this often. I keep little sticky notes and I take it off and I read and share it with the kids and I put the sticky note back where I, need, where I want it. And if I don't take it off, sometimes I take sticky notes off and I'm like, where did that go? And it's all gone. I have my plan and it'll tell me what page I have each kind of question so I can always come back and, and add to it. So in terms of like using this over and over again for lots of different ways, this planner I think helps organize my thinking, organize my um, my questions, and maybe I change them. And so I go back and I can adjust as necessary. Any questions or thoughts about that? I'm curious yeah. how you approach it. You've had a class full of like many email students from the mm -hmm. Would you ask different questions? Would you have them up to see? Or would you kind of run it the same? Um, I would run it very similar. I still run it the same in terms of, you know, it's nice because you have smaller groups of kids, so maybe I have, like, let's think about this. I give a lot more wait time. Um, I do focus a lot on wait time, um, especially in a smaller group, and they are language learners that are still developing, um, because they need more time to think. And I may have them write things down or draw pictures, so I have notes a lot of times for them. That's why I have a paper for you guys, too, so you can take notes as necessary. So you talk about using the book over and over again. Like, is there a general saturation point when you're like, that's you like you've used it for kind of I, if that's, that that's, you found or not really? No, I mean, I I've used I've used that book in my fifth grade class um, for writing, for reading, uh, not reading, um, not reading necessarily, but like uh, fluency. I talk a lot about like how right, this is a story you know. Read to me with the tone of a happy kid. Read to me in this tone with a sad, with a sad voice. You know, read it with, through, you know, the, a dog's perspective. Mark, I'm like, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, so, but so it depends. Like I, this book, like I said, I use this for onomatopoeia. I use this book for flashbacks. I use this book for tone. Um, what? Circle stories, yeah. So the, the the trio of events, you know, how does that come back and why is that important? Um, yeah, and then I'm done. And then I go, okay, my next one that I really like. Uh, how am I on time? 15 minutes? Okay. So on your table are also some questions. Some of these are questions I asked you in the story. Some of these are typical questions that we ask as teachers. 
Um, I want you to go ahead and sort them between what you think would be the literal questions, some inferential questions, and maybe some unanswerable questions. So go ahead and with your table team, sort sort your, your statements, your questions into three categories. I probably should ask that question. What do you mean? I always like, 
because if I find out what he said, I should have been right. And then it makes a lot of time that we go to the future and go like, oh, lower, lower level. I hear you on that. I understand this. 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 I'm like, that was a good idea, and I don't remember what she said. So 
Um, so I have pretty much everything that I've presented here for you. Um, the last thing is um, a, a poem. So this could be something if you want to try this on, on, on something short, which when I've read this poem, like I, I get teary-eyed every time. So um, if you like to cry, there you go. Um, but this is, I think, a good example of you know, any of this can kind of go with this. And then the last pages are, again, accountable talk. Like, how do you get kids to talk like this? Um, is through purposeful um, planting of, like, this is how you behave. Here are some sentence stems that you can use. So, again, this isn't, this isn't all just, you know, magically done. We have actually worked hard to make this. So, any, any reflections or any thoughts about this? Is, I used to think, now I think. Chad will ask if anybody wanted to you know, send their presentations or their work on so it could be shared. I did send that to him, so I don't know if he's sending that out at the end of the day or when, whenever. But I do have um, I do have a folder with all of this material and oh, okay, good. So it's on the So it's already filled out, so you can see what a filled out list of looks like. So I hope you enjoyed this and you feel like, yay, Saturday. <laughs> 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 All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.